All right, all right, all right. Let's fall right into it and talk about the new Bethesda hotness that is Starfield. Yes, yes, yes. Let's get that Starfield review live and going. So I've been playing Starfield now for like the last past couple of weeks. I've been trying to get a decent amount of hours in. That way I can give y'all a clear and I guess objective based review of the game because there is a lot to experience. There is a lot to explore. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's just a lot. To do now going in i'm gonna tell you right now i've been waiting for starfield to drop and release for quite a while and the game's been in development for about 10 plus years now and when you look at it from the from the gameplay you know previews and trailers it looked like it, it had a lot going on like it had a lot to offer like this is a game that's been well you know thought out and just well planned and almost every detail considered and then we got the game and here we are you play the game you initially start off in a little mining drawing everything you're like wow you kind of wow by the graphics it starts in this little cave or little mining tunnel and you're like wow this looks pretty good and then you make your way up to the surface experience you know these little pirates or whatever so you get to experience the gameplay or the action and you're like wow this might be all right for bethesda game like they you know they're it's a first person shooter it's an rpg you think they're doing something but after that I mean, you're essentially lost. And I'm going to tell you right now, me, I, I was, y'all. Me, I, I was. Boy, lad, I was lost in the sauce. I started off and just was exploring planets. I really wasn't even sure what to really do. I kind of was just following the main quest line to get experience points mad quick. That's what I do in Bethesda games. For those of you out there, our fellow avid Bethesda games, you know how it go in your Fallout 4s and 3s and 2s and 1s and Skyrim, Elder Scrolls, what have you, Oblivion. I mean, in those games, you you pretty much can go off and do what you want to do, like right after, you know, from the jump. And that's what I did. I jumped to another star system and started to explore. Now, I'm going to start off with the combat because you spend almost the least amount of time doing that. The guns, they feel snappy, punchy at times. Sometimes they don't feel powerful enough as enemies become bullet sponges and that's where you just dump a whole bunch of rounds into them just to make them drop. I mean, they're just normal humans in spacesuits that act as armor. So theoretically, that's just not proper physics, which is a shame because the game does pay close attention to physics, being able to knock objects off of the table like into a bucket. I'm not doing all that, but you can do it in the game. Or like this one time where I shot an enemy off the ledge and fell down and exploded like i thought that was like cool but you don't experience enough of that like few and far in between when you get into a skirmish that lasts longer than say two three minutes until maybe you make your way through the interior of a building and then you just do that over and over again the gameplay loop sure as hell ain't helped out by the fact that the game reuses structures throughout multiple different planets. And I'm talking about identical structures, almost down to the exact item placement inside of that structure. This happened more than once, y'all. I can tell you at least four or five times where I've been to a totally different planet in a totally different star system, and I've run into the same kind of setup that I did way back somewhere else. And I'm like, how is this even? Okay, I maybe give it the benefit of the doubt. If in the universe, they maybe use the same material buildings, you know what I mean? Like sheetrock here and drywall, things like that, right? Like, all right, you're going to see those common materials in a, in a common household. But there, it's just like, it was the same builders and they put everything in the same exact spot. Totally immersive breaking. And one of the things that has completely hurt the game, that's its procedural generation AI. The AI that's running in the background that just creates these thousand planets that Todd Howard said we can explore with less than 10% of them even having life on it, which the life just has the same kind of monotonous, you know, movement and demeanor about them. There's nothing interesting about them. It's kind of cool when you first see like a quote unquote alien, but then after a while you're like, well, I mean, that's it. The game is severely missing intelligent alien life forms, in my opinion. That would at least make exploration somewhat more interesting or combat more interesting, as you would have to maybe go up against bipedal or quadpedal like creatures or beings. Something totally different. I mean, Bethesda could have really explored the enemy type here. No, instead, in combat, you get your basic pirates 
right? You might get an alien here or there, some OP, and here or there you might come across a mechanicalized like dog robot and some bipedal robots and some turrets, and that's about it. That's what you're typically going to see every time you run into an enemy encounter or you get into a skirmish, like that's it. And that essentially made the gameplay loop boring and uninspiring. I mean, I can deal with a gameplay loop, so long as you're aspiring to do something. I mean, you're just looping for experience points and maybe resources. For my build, which I'm not even at level 25 yet, I've almost maxed out all I can research between my weapons and my armor. And so crafting doesn't really become an interest to me unless I plan on doing settlement building, which is something I completely skipped over because again, at least in Fallout 4, when you were doing settlement building, you might've had other enemies try to raid your base or other animals or mutants like trying to attack your base that you needed that protection. I just don't really see the need for protection on these planets when the alien life doesn't really attack you. It's just a mess. Bethesda kind of dropped the bomb here. I mean, the melee combat is also weak sauce. There's not a lot of melee weapons. I mean, so far I've seen uh, the sword and the rescue ax. I mean, a rescue ax is the second best melee weapon you can use in a science fiction based interstellar exploration sim game, if you will. And those are the only two core melee weapons, let alone there are no upgrades or mods you can make to them. That was also a little bit of a disappointment and letdown in terms of the combat. For me so the combat wasn't great i mean the story the story i haven't completed the main story something about you know an artifact and it just gives me big mass effect vibes to be very honest with you every time i get deeper and deeper into the main quest line it just makes me want to go play mass effect simply because it was a better science fiction game with a very similar concept protagonist comes across strange artifact protagonist touches strange artifact protagonist scenes visions and you know things that he or she can't explain therefore this puts you on a quest to discover what it is you just experienced yes that's starfield and yes that's also mass effect the difference here the juxtaposition is that mass effect is the better game overall hands down that's no knock to starfield but a story driven space exploration rpg should have a strong narrative at least from its core story concept and it's just not there the npcs and support and cast they add some level of complexity to the story but not much aside from basic side banter and them reminding you that you don't need to carry as much stuff around like i know that i don't need no reminders about that but it is there and present in the game not helpful it's there it's not helpful not helpful at all it doesn't truly add or enhance the story in no way shape or form and it literally has you just button smashing through the text i mean that's how i played i read i, I found myself reading the text quicker than i wanted it to be on screen and even then i was typically uninterested in even what the npc had to say just give me the quest details point me in the direction i'll go i'll figure the details out along the way i mean that's kind of the story experience in starfield and that goes with side quests as well i mean some side quests i've played were interesting but nothing that's too over the top. I mean, I know there are a few out there, but uh, essentially this is what you get with the game. I mean, this is what you get with the game. The, the side quests don't really offer up much of anything outside of go to this place, either kill this person or save this person, and then go back to the source or the person who gave you the quest. Why in Starfield there's no way to like have radio communication or send messages between vessels or, you know, planetary systems? I don't know. You would think if we can travel and have faster than light speed and, and jump between different stars and be, an inner, be a spacefaring civilization, then why can't we send like an email to clear the quest? No, you have to fly all the way back to the quest giver. This is beyond frustrating when all you want to do is maybe sell some loot, get your experience points. That has been the gameplay loop for me in Starfield, right? Get my experience points, sell my loot. I haven't really touched on shipbuilding. If that's something you're interested in, it may or may not enhance, you know, your experience as a gamer. It really depends on how much you want to do it. My understanding is no matter how much time you spend in the space building portion of Starfield, you're going to find yourself not enjoying space combat. I did not enjoy the space combat at all. It just feels like you're just turning and turning, just trying to see who can get the better leverage on, you know, firing down upon your ship. I did not like the controls. I thought it was just boring. I mean, you're literally just flying around. There's nothing interesting going on the music is kind of shallow and pedantic yeah there'll be some radio banter between ships going back and forth it feels like you're in a boat fighting another boat in the ocean that's what it feels like 
That's what the space combat feels like in Starfield. And I simply hate it. When I fast travel to a planet, I hope that there's no space combat when I get there because I just want to land on the planet. And then there were the load screens. The load screen situation is just abysmal. I don't know what Bethesda was thinking here. There's no reason why you should have to exit your ship, experience a load screen, experience a load screen getting on your ship, experience a load screen getting out of your menus, experience a load screen to fast travel, experience a load screen to enter into a shop to sell your stuff. I mean, there's just this, the game is riddled with load screens. And for a game that releases in 2023, especially from a high tier or a big budget studio like Bethesda, it's totally unacceptable. The load screens are one of the single most immersive break-in game design features that Bethesda has decided to go with in Starfield. And one that has severely dragged down my review of the game. If you've seen or heard other Starfield reviews, then I know another one you saw is the lack of maps, right? Which makes navigating tiresome and confusing. I get lost in cities every time I go to New Atlantis. I mean, I'm just now getting used to moving around New Atlantis, but the lack of maps anywhere is just kind of mind boggling or just the design feature that they would go with. You also don't completely explore entire planets. There are invisible walls put up, but it's kind of pointless to do so anyway, because of all the landmarks and caves and abandoned whatsoever's are all the same. And once you've probably seen one or two or three on different planets, you, you've pretty much seen them all. So there really is no need to explore entire planets. There's no ground vehicle of any kind or amount, which is desperately needed. I mean, you can kind of see some vehicles in the game where Bethesda could have implemented it. I know I've seen reports in other areas where Bethesda is just like, well, we didn't implement it because it would have made ground travel too easy. No, they would have showed that each planet is kind of shallow and not really much going on. That's even worse traversing person just going to your you know your point of interest your POI and that's essentially what I find myself doing every time I landed on a planet I just went and walked directly or just mosey right on about to my destination and then back to my ship if I needed some resources I branched out but believe you me it's not like there's anything to see or truly explore on these planets if mankind was more settled on different planets and we had like full town or many camps or self-independent or self-sufficient and operating uh, you know, camps and things like that, that once you touch down, you knew that you went to, you know, like a, tra like a traditional fallout city or a fallout camp. You went there, you know, there was going to be quests, you know, there was going to be your oddballs. There's going to be things there to see, do and experience. That's just totally non-existent in Starfield. The menus and the interface of the UI is an absolute chore. Finding and moving items take up way too much time of the game, like way too much time. Fast traveling between menus feels archaic and also like a complete chore. I mean, I literally have to get myself mentally prepared when I'm ready to go off and sell my loot and items because if I'm trying to sell something from my ship, I also find myself over encumbered most of the time. My allies also over encumbered. My ship's also full. I can't find enough vendors to properly sell off all my loot. I mean, I'm building up all of this money and resources. Buying a home seems more about vanity than anything else. Yes, you can decorate it and store, you know, like your different suits and things like that. But <laughs> I mean, why would you want to? And now overall, I just want to mention that it is a Bethesda game for sure. You'll spend half of your time doing inventory management and the other half, well, skipping text and dialogue. Somewhere in the middle though, you'll find enjoyment in questing, upgrading, and exploring. Now, my final vertical, my final grade, what would I give Starfield out of a 10? It's gonna be a solid five out of 10 for me. It's barely passable. There are some things Starfield does do right. The level of detail and the environments and like the weapons, the armors, the armor, although starts to get repetitive over time and some of the helmets look pretty cool the overall detail in the environments and the ships i mean the game definitely nails that but the important aspects of what makes a good game great starfield is totally missing all of those things this is again coming from a well-seasoned well-renowned developer like bgs but that's the game studios who has given us classics like fallout skyrim and elder scrolls but with starfield this ain't it this ain't it y'all that's all i got for this one it's been your boy lab do be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't yet or you're new to the community. I do hope to catch y'all all in the next one. So until then, be easy.